So we're making some updates to the application we've been working on. Uh, so making the ID of the spreadsheet dynamic. Uh, so this corresponds to the ID within the URL there. So we can easily update that. We can also select a sheet. Uh, so these are hard coded in the sheets. So if we want to select whatever we've got within people, by default, we haven't added in a query yet. So it's just going to return back all the values for the query. So now we can do a select for the query. And if we want to just return back column A and B, these do need to be uppercase and they're going to correspond with the column values there. So A and B. So we're going to return back first name and last name. And we can be, so if we want to just return back first name and last name, we can do select. This is going to return back first name and last name. And then we can be more specific where. And if we want to look for where B, so column B contains and where B contains this particular last name. We're going to make the request. And we can also add in a value to limit. So if we want to limit it to one, we can also limit it to one as well. So that way we can build the endpoint. And this is can also be used as a generator to generate the endpoint. And then you can use the fetch request simply with whatever the endpoint here is. So just an example of how you can make your requests to your spreadsheet dynamic and return back the corresponding results. So that's what we're covering in this lesson. This lesson, we're going to take what we learned in the previous two lessons, and we're going to make a dynamic way to request data from the spreadsheet. Uh, so let's open up the index page. And I'm going to link out to apps four, and then we're going to save this one as apps four. So selecting and selecting all of the spreadsheet items. Uh, so first, let's make the sheets dynamic. So we'll make an input form and set up a label. And this can be four. And the drop down for this will be sheets and select a sheet. So it's going to be the main object there for the input. And let's create an HTML select object. So name sheets. And then for the select options. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do this dynamically with JavaScript. So we'll create the select object. And then we'll apply the select for the sheets. And we can do all of this dynamically with uh, JavaScript. So we're going to select the se sheets object and do the select. And I'll just give it a class of sheets. So with uh, JavaScript within the apps for where we've got the main part of our HTML. And we'll select and create a value for sheets. And then use document query selector. Select the element with a class of sheets. So that will select that drop down. And then we want to create multiple sheet items. So, and we'll create an array that's going to contain all of the sheet names. So we've got the sheet here. And I'll open up the sheet object. So this will allow us to dynamically update a whole lot easier. Uh, well, we'll have the sheets within an array. So test one. Our other sheet is going to be two. Our next sheet is going to be sheet six. And then the people will be that, that value there. So what we want to do is take the sheet array. So just make sure that you're matching with your sheet names. Probably will have different sheet names within your spreadsheet. Uh, so this is going to be unique for my spreadsheet. And just to demonstrate how you can set this type of thing up. So for each, and we're going to loop through, return back the sheet object uh, from the array. And this is where we're going to construct the sheet items. So we've got, already got the function to make the cell. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to create each one of the cells. And we can just create a temporary element. Uh, so we want to apply it to sheets. So it's going to be the parent. And the content of each one of these is going to be what we've got for the sheet. And then for the class, we're just going to select that it's an element. So as we loop through, we want to take the value of temp element 
And we're also going to select that and set that to the value of sheet. So going into our web page, and let's uh, see what happened here on the HTML side of things. So we've got the divs, we've got the select. So we've got all of these selects, and it's actually creating them as divs. So we want to actually update and change the element type. And by default, we're creating all divs. So let's uh, update this to be element type. So just comma separate that. And if we don't have an element type, then we'll specify it as a div. And so here we can select the element type and the type of element that we're going to be selecting is going to be an option. So it's not going to be a div. So there we've got a populated list, select a sheet. So we can dynamically change the sheets. Uh, let's update that value. So within the quest three, when we do the request value for it, and we do the get data. So it's at this point that we want to specify that sheet value. So going in from the sheets object, we want to select a value for the sheets object. So let's see what happens. Uh, we want to select sheet number one. And it looks like uh, we threw an error there. So it's not returning back the property of columns. And just double checking that we do have a sheet number one. And sheet number one, it is different. It doesn't have any headings. So I will add in the headings. And uh, for this one as well, we're going to have to delete out all the excess rows. So just uh, we have to do some cleanup here of the contents. So deleting all of the excess rows. Uh, so let's do a refresh. Sheet number one. Let's try sheet number two. So sheet number two worked. Sheet number three worked and sheet number four worked, uh, or sheet number four didn't work. So it looks like we're having a problem with getting the value for the columns. So we're not able to loop through and get uh, the column values here. Uh, so let's see what happened. It looks like we're returning back undefined in 34. So we don't actually return back a table within the JSON object. Uh, so let's return back JSON and we'll see what the problem here is. So we do have to do a little bit of troubleshooting because we're customizing this to be dynamic. So it looks like what happened here is that we got a status of error uh, and the errors is an invalid query. And as we're trying to select from the query there, uh, it's actually the query is the problem here uh, that we're not able to return that back. Uh, so right now we'll just customize the query and we'll comment out the, the query value. So we'll customize the query to select column A and B as the return. So ideally, the data is all going to match. And that's why we're throwing an error there, because it wasn't able to properly uh, return the data back. So we'll handle that error. Uh, so right now, all of the sheets are working. We're able to go through all of the sheets, return back the heading values for the sheets. And the other thing that I want to update as well is that I want to update these sheets that do have a label within the headings that instead of the ID, we're going to use the heading value. Uh, so that was another issue that looks like we're encountering that issue. So let's uh, console log out the, the column and we'll see what kind of update we can make for that. So we'll make the request uh, so this one does have a label of A, and that one has a label as well. So what we're going to do is we'll do a value, value, and if it's got a column label, or it'll take column ID value. And then instead of specifying the ID, we're going to do the val value. So that will update and replace the value with whatever we've got for the heading. And if there's no heading, then it will just use the ID. So this way we're able to select the sheets dynamically. Uh, so next up, we want to update the actual query. Uh, so this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Uh, so let's uh, make a, an option for that. And I'm also going to copy that and just do another line break there. 
and you can style this as needed. Uh, so this is going to be an input field. And it'll be type text class. And this is where, where we're going to hold the query. And we can also add a label for that. And this can be for my query. So I'm just doing some quick copy and pasting as well to save some time. So add a query. And then the name of this is going to be the my query. So add a query, make the request. Uh, let's select here and we'll select that query object. And we can also call it my query as the JavaScript name of it. And we're going to select the element with a class of my query. So that gives us, brings it into an object format. Uh, so now we can select the value of the query. Uh, so let's update the query here. Uh, so all of these values can stay as is. Uh, we don't need to make any adjustments to there. Uh, it's only where we've got the query that we want to make some type of adjustments here. So selecting A, B, C, and E, where it contains a limit of three. Uh, so let's uh, update where we can add in the query. And we're not going to predefine what the query is. So comment both of those out. And we'll do a condition to check if my query value has a length is greater than zero. And if it is, then this is where we can construct the, the query. And we'll add in the query here at the end. So first we'll set up the main URL. And if there is a query, then we're going to add that query to the end of the URL. So URL one, and just add that value to it. And I'll also use the backticks for this one as well. Uh, so this is where you can construct the query. So we'll get the query and the value of the query that we want to use. And actually we need to encode it as well. And I'll just call it update code. It should be updated code. Uh, so this is where we're going to use the encode of the query. And this is actually what we're going to send over to the endpoint. So request, and let's uh, see what happened here. Cannot access Q3 before trying to define it. Uh, so we need to update that, the order where we're adding that. So right now, it's just going to select all of the data from the sheets. And so I want to also make it dynamic, uh, the widths. So let's uh, update this. and the widths of the box values. So we're going to take how many columns we get returned, and then this is going to set the width. So within the fetch request, and I'll just set a default of 25%. And then we'll set this dynamically, depending on how many columns that we have. So let's, uh, actually we can just do this all within one statement. We're, we're going to set the width, and the width is going to be based on the column's length. And if we take 100 and we divide by the column's length, that's going to set our width value. And then for the elements as we return it, let's set the style a width, and then we're going to equal the width to whatever we've got for the width plus percent. So that sets the widths automatically. And let's also do this for the elements as we're constructing them here. Uh, so also for L1. So depending on how many columns we get returned back, uh, it will adjust automatically. So again, just trying to make it more dynamic. So some of the, so they're not all the same. So some of them will have four columns, some will have five, and whatever number of columns, uh, we're ready to automatically dynamically adjust to accommodate the various column values. So let's uh, go back to the selection and the query selection and uh, constructing the selection values. Uh, I'm also going to add in a few other inputs so that we can customize the spreadsheet ID. And uh, this we're going to just uh, keep as is, but this will give us an option that if we want to have a custom spreadsheet ID, we can do that as well. My 
sheet so that way we can customize and build the, the queries dynamically. So I'm going to use the sheet value there. And this will change if, uh, in case I've got a different sheet. But by default, I'm just going to set the value to this to be what my default value is. And then my sheet and my sheet. So this way, we can customize the sheet value that we want to use. And I'm also going to update the styling for the my sheet class. And I'm going to set a width of this to be 100%. That goes all the way across, as this is going to be a fairly long one. And also for the query as well. For the my query, we're going to do 100% across for the query as well. And then we've got the request there. So we can do this fully dynamically. Uh, so let's update the sheet, and we'll grab that dynamically. So instead of my query, we've got the my sheet and select an element with my sheet and this is going to be equal to whatever we've got the value is at the time. Uh, so let's select that ID and we'll set that dynamically as well. So whenever we make the request. You can also customize these ones, but I'm just going to leave these as is. So these are the three main parameters that we need in order to make the selection. And then uh, the rest we can make selections as needed. Uh, so if we want to request. And here, let's set up uh, some options to select. So here we can select A, C from test one. So let's see what happened there. So it looks like uh, it didn't actually do the selection there. Uh, so let's see why it didn't do the selection. And going into the console, let's clear that. So it's undefined. So it looks like it's uh, it's actually should be value length. And select, do select A and B. So these do need to be uppercase, so they correspond with the column values. Uh, so selecting A and B from that sheet, if we want A and C, that way we can select A and C from the sheet. So it's returning back the corresponding values for A and C. Let me just update those so we can see that uh, there is a change in those values. So now we've got the new updated values. So we can make the request there, the different request values. Uh, so we're selecting where A and B, and then where. And then this is where we can check to see if A is greater than 15. So we'll only return back the corresponding values where A is greater than 15. And you can create your own request queries as well. Uh, so this way, you can easily update the sheet to a new sheet. I uh, just need to update the sheet names that you have and then add the query that you want and you can query different sheets depending on their ID. So this is just to make this exercise a little bit more dynamic where you can dynamically create your endpoint URL and then this is something that you can copy and paste and just simply use within your fetch requests. And of course, you can customize the queries using the query language reference page as well.